Hey my friends, welcome to another little anatomy show clip on how our body functions and what we can practically do to make it feel and move better. Today, in this little video, I want to talk with you about collarbones. Position of collarbones, often it's like they need to be horizontal. Well, when we look at our friend here, he's already sagging. So the question we need to look at is, well, what holds our collarbones in place? Why does the collarbone position matter? And what are the influences? So let's look at the first one. This guy is looking very different to me, even though we might think, think like, oh, well, then same internal structure. However, he doesn't have any ligaments, other than a little bit of plastic drawn around his <laughs> joints on the right side only. Uh, he doesn't have any muscles, he doesn't have any fascia. Uh, so he is basically, apart from the wires, really subject to gravity and because gravity over the years that he's been around and hanging out in my videos, <laughs> his rib cage and overall structure has slumped. And in this slumping, all the collarbones and the ribcage are sagging and sinking. That's why his are pointing downwards. Now, in our bodies, in your body, that will look very, very different because we do have muscles. We can move on our own. We can also support ourselves. We have connective tissue. We have fascia. We have ligaments. We have so many ways of how we can adjust our posture or oh, hold it tight. You see, like that's already like, well, what happens when we hold tension in our shoulders and neck? Look at the collarbones. See, I'm using this pen to just draw the line. This is like lying on top of my collarbone. When I'm standing, it's roughly horizontal. When I feel tight and stressed, my shoulders go up. And with that, the collarbone goes up. Points up. Yeah, his is pointing down towards the shoulders, going downwards. Now. Let's go back a step just to see what's behind this. Behind this is the connection, why this matters, the connection between your sternum, so the breastbone, and the shoulder blade. Now turn our friend around. Shoulder blade is this part where on one end your shoulder, uh, your shoulder connects to the arm bone. And in the front here, at this end, the collarbone connects to it. So your collarbone is, while it kind of for many people relates to the rib cage and the neck, it's actually relevant to your arm, arm actions and shoulder blade actions. Drawing our shoulder blades up from tension in the neck brings your collarbone up. But this is not a matter of simply up and down. We are not linear. So nothing is just like forwards, backwards, up or down. Yeah? We have a three-dimensional body and we constantly move in three dimensions. In fact, we're moving never really linear. Even if I'm trying to move my finger directly towards you, that looks linear, but the internal workings of the body are anything but. There's a lot of sli uh, sliding, turning, spiraling, non-directional actions going on, you see? So a sliding of the shoulders up that appears like, well, now Chris is lifting his shoulders, is actually a non-linear sliding of the shoulder blades along the rib cage. And your rib cage is not flat like a wall here. Your rib cage is rounded. So when the shoulder blades move up the back of the body, your Shoulder blades move up, around, and forward. They're actually doing this kind of action. Now, this is purely skeletal. Like, we're not talking about, like, this muscle's pulling, that muscle's pulling. Yeah, muscles are lifting it up, for sure. But the shoulder blades are following their terrain, if you want to call it that. Yeah? And that means when we visually see two-dimensionally, oh, the shoulder blade, and with that, the collarbone is moving up. It's actually not just moving up, it's rotating. It's coming up, down, and forward. So we're kind of like tilting our shoulder or, or sliding our shoulder blade on top of the body. So it appears as if the top collarbone just goes up, but it's actually going, if I turn it sideways, up, over, and 
forward, so it's a downward rotation in it. Yeah? Where your shoulder blades need to be are on your back. But, see, why can't Chris give a straight answer? <laughs> it's not just straight. It's not just on the back, because most people, when they take their shoulder blades to the back, they just squeeze the shoulder blades together. And then we walk around like this. We're shortening the back. It's not about linear movement. Please keep this in mind. Not linear, collarbones back. This appears two-dimensionally. Oh yeah, now his collarbones are horizontal. But actually, I'm squishing the back of my body. I'm reducing the ability of the spine key because these muscles in this area, in multiple layers, have squished together. Not what we want because that limits the ability of our spine to move. That also <laughs> limits the ability of our shoulders to move because we're tightening it up. And most importantly, underlying here, what's there? What's there? What's there? Huh? Your lungs. So you're limiting your breath by squeezing your shoulder blades back. Looks good on the collarbone, but keep that as a linear reference. It doesn't really apply to real life, to your practice. You want to have space. So we're really looking at a rotation. Shoulder blades naturally roll down on the back, not squeezed together. They're naturally hanging, not hanging, supported, they're naturally supported on the back of the way that leaves even mobility front to back. And with that, your collarbones, rather than going up and down, they're really rotating around like this. They move up and down depending on where you hold your sternum, how you hold your rib catch. Have I confused you yet? <laughs> so let's make sense of this for yourselves. What I invite you to do, you can pause this video and come back to it, or you can do it along with me. What I invite you to do is simply feel your sternum and your collarbone. You can place one hand, maybe the, the wrist on the sternum, on the, on the breastbone, and then your fingertips on the collarbone. And just notice what happens when you shrug your shoulder up, how there is actually like a forward momentum in there, how it's like downturn momentum, and what happens when you pull your shoulder blade back. And then do a few rotations backwards. And notice, like, wow, now I'm doing backward rotations. I can actually feel there is a bit more space in the shoulder rather than the body being, like, squished together. The more we pull the shoulder blades together, the more narrow we make ourselves with the space-limiting results on our breath and our mobility and so on. Hmm? So when we're looking at shoulder blade position, and with that collarbone position, it's not up and down, it's about rotations and creating space. In the process, we're dealing with all the relevant muscles. So if we're thinking of <laughs> collarbones with the shoulder blades just being muscles that pull up towards the head, it simply means, well, these ones here that can move it down on the back, on the front, on the, everywhere, like I go around you, the muscles that have the ability to draw the shoulder blades down to support and position them further down compared to only being suspended from here, they're not doing the part. And they're often switched off. So when we're doing conscious shoulder backward rotations, there is an up yeah, that's where we are when we're stressed and the collarbone's up, right? So, but then there's also a back, the back we discussed too, but there's also downward. And it's not chest out downward and back, it's shoulders back. Yeah, the spine is doing its own thing. They're not, they are connected, but they don't need to move together. Mm -hmm. So try this out, that you can, with space, Move your shoulders without the compression of the body inwards and notice how that releases the muscles on top of your shoulders by helping you through activation of muscles that can support and position your shoulders further downwards and move them. That creates a more relaxed rather than him like gravity effect. He's missing the upper part. Yeah? position of your collarbones. When we breathe in, rib cage lifts, sternum lifts, so there is a sometimes elevation of shoulder blades and collarbones moving up because of the expansion of the rib cage. Hmm? That's what happens. That's how you can influence it. And please think in terms of three dimensions. 
not just up or down or forwards and backwards. That gets you stuck in your posture and leads to compression of space. Create freedom, create space, enjoy your mobile body, move well. I'll see you in the next video.